Hello and welcome to the second video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own 3D Endless Runner game in Unity. In this tutorial, we'll be covering materials and obstacles. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel, and you'll also find all the scripts and assets we use in this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So last time we left off with this one particular object, which is just plain and boring right now. So let's give some life to it. So obviously our first level is going to be kind of sandy, desert-based, like you see in the thumbnail of this series. So to do that, we need to add something called a material to it. To do that, if we go down to our assets down here in the project panel, we can right click, create a new folder. And this folder will contain our materials. So let's call it materials. Now it's always good practice to have folders for everything. It just makes things easier to find when you have a lot more assets involved in your project. Keeping everything just in the assets folder is gonna get messy. So try and keep it as tidy as possible. That's what I like to do. So once we have this folder, let's right click again inside, create, and halfway down the list, you'll find material. Let's call this material sand mat. Mat just being short for material. So you'll see this is now just a little object ball thing. It's nothing too fancy. What we can do is make it a different color. So let's make it a kind of a sandy, deserty looking color. And we can do that over here. You could add a texture if you want to, and we will get around to that at some point in this series. But for now, I'm aiming for the style that, that Timmy and Mousy game is in, which is just kind of plain, not plain, but you get what I mean. It's solid colors. So let's select this. So clicking on it, you get the option to set it to whatever color you want. And let's have a kind of yellowy, slightly browny color. That might do. So obviously you can select any variation of color here on the wheel, and then you can select any variation of color of that selection right here in the box. Down here you have your standard RGB colors, and this one at the bottom is the alpha. This one dictates how see-through it is, so whether it's opaque, translucent, or transparent, and you can set that here. 255 means it's completely opaque, and zero would mean it's completely transparent. Anything in between is translucent. So once we've selected our color, I'm going to close that down. And you can see that this right here is our color. We can now drag and drop this material onto this object, like so, and it will change its color. Naturally, lighting does have an impact on what your game looks like, and we will get round to lighting and shadows a little later on. But for now, let's pan around and let's have a look at this a little close up. Are we happy with that color? No, we're not. So we can change a couple of settings here to make it look a little different. So if we change the metallicness, you can see it changes it to a more metallic look. This means it could be a little bit more reflective, but you can also change the smoothness of it as well to give it a different kind of look. And you can see how it would reflect looking at this icon down here. So that's the current state of your material. So I'm gonna reduce the smoothness to nothing, have the metallicness up just a little bit, zoom out, and now I think that's not bad. At the end of the day, we're not aiming for incredibly intense graphics, so that's good for me, I'm happy with that. So what else can we do? Well, we added a cube in, didn't we? So let's add another cube. Let's go to Game Object, 3D Object, and let's go to Cube again. Now you'll notice this one does not put it in the center like it did with our original section. And what we'll do is we'll call this one Obstacle 1. So 0, 1. And this is going to be an obstacle that we could theoretically run into and our game would be over. So for convenience, let's now set this back to 0, 0, 0, so it's in the center of our scene, and let's double click it so we can zoom in a little more. Now you'll notice it looks a little bit weird when we move around. That's because these two objects are directly intersecting, and that's something that we don't particularly want in our game. If they intersect where the player cannot see, 
it doesn't really matter too much. It's quite normal for that to occur even in AAA games. But this is a section where the player will be able to see, so what we need to do is pull it out of the ground. And what you can do is hold control on your keyboard, hold the left mouse button over the green arrow and drag it up a little bit so it sits flush on the ground. And if we zoom in, you should be able to see that there is no gap between the object and the ground. It's quite literally sat on top of it. How do we know this? Well, if we look at the position of the Y axis, which is the green arrow we just moved, it is now set to one. That means it sits perfectly on the ground and we can see the shadow of that object. If we were to move it up a little bit more, you could see that there is a gap between and it's not sat flush on the floor. Let's hold control Z to undo that. So this will be an obstacle. Uh, I think I'm going to make this maybe some kind of box or a crate or something like that. And I want it to be a little bit bigger than what it is. So let's change the scale. Let's double it. Let's have two by two by two. And you can see that it does indeed intersect the floor again. You can just do what we did before and bring it upward so it sits flush with the ground. So I think that looks OK as our first obstacle. So obviously our player is going to start somewhere here. And this is going to be our first obstacle that we will have to move out the way of. What else can we do? Well, we could create another object. So I'm going to use at some point maybe a tree or a rock. And what we can do is hold control, press D on this obstacle 01, and it will create a duplicate of it. That means that there are now two of those sat in the exact same position in our game. So if we were to select this duplicate that we've just created, hold control and pull the blue arrow, which is the Z axis, it will pull it apart like so. We don't want it to be the same shape. What I'm thinking we might have is a tree. So we want this object to be a bit more, let's say, not square. So we can change how it looks. So let's go over here to the scale and change it on the X to 1. Let's also change it just on the Z to 1 as well. So you could imagine this being the tree trunk, and at the top you've got the foliage of the tree. So that's what we're going to aim for. We don't need to have this object at the top where the tree is, because when we insert an asset, we can insert it into the cube, and it will work just fine for us. So although we name this obstacle 1, let's advance ourselves and let's prepare for the future. We know this is going to be a crate, so let's have this as crate 01. And let's also rename this one. You can right click or press F2 to rename whatever way you choose to do. And let's call this tree 01 as well. And let's hold control and move the tree somewhere over here. So now we have two obstacles in preparation for when we have a player to run. Speaking of player, let's insert a player object in preparation for our next tutorial. And our player object is going to start somewhere here. We're not going to use a cube this time. We are going to go to game object, 3D object, and let's use a capsule. So this capsule will encompass our player. So when we insert it, let's rename this to player. And you can rename these things as you go along. You know, maybe once you get really far in development and you've got a lot of these things, it might get difficult to uh, rename everything. So we'll get to a certain point where we're happy with what we've got, make sure all our naming conventions is fine, and then we can move on from there. But for now, all we need to do is let's set our position back to 0, 0, 0 for our player object. And then let's hold control and drag the player down here wherever you want it to be, however long you've got your section. Uh, let's have it there, and let's pull it out the ground to about there. So, although we use cubes for different things, you know, there are different shapes and different things that you can use for whatever else. Uh, something that's always on some of these objects are colliders, and we'll get into colliders at some point. They are vital to how our game will function, so we will have to talk about them at some point. So already you can kind of visualize how this game is going to go. We have our player here, we have our obstacle here, and we have another obstacle here. Now, something we haven't done before is press the play button here at the top. 
What will that do exactly? Well, it will give us a view of our game that we can't really do anything. And what it does is renders our main camera right here. So this main camera is vital to what we see in our game, and it doesn't look very interesting right now. But I'm going to leave it in play mode, and if we go back to our scene view and click on main camera and zoom out, there's our main camera there, and you can see it's facing this way, as dictated by these white lines and it, what it's looking at. So all it can really see is just this. There's no script in our game, so even if we go to game view and try moving, try doing anything, nothing will work. So, how do we solve that? Well, that's what we're going to do in the next tutorial. I'm going to press play again to stop that view, head back to scene view, and save it. So, next tutorial, we are going to start some C sharp programming. And I know some people do find programming as the most difficult part of game development, but don't worry at all. It's going to be a nice, simple script, and it will achieve a lot because we're going to make our player object right here move just with a nice, simple script. Like I say, it's not difficult. Some people do think it is, but you'll see the reality of coding when we get to it. It is simple if you just put your mind to it. So remember to subscribe and click that notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial in the series, and I will see you next time.